So speaking of training a model, uh, there's many different optimization algorithms for doing so, right? So could you tell me about the differences between some of them, specifically between batch gradient descent, mini batch gradient descent, and stochastic gradient descent? Sure, yeah. So firstly, uh, gradient descent is an optimization technique, like you mentioned, that is used to find the minimum of a loss function. Uh, so specifically, the gradient can be calculated by taking the derivative of the loss with respect to the parameters of a particular uh, algorithm. And since the gradient descent actually represents the direction of the steepest descent, it can be used to take gradual steps towards the minimum of that loss function. Um, kind of back to your question of those differences, uh, those terms refer to uh, different but related ways of dividing up the trading set, uh, computing the actual gradient, and then performing the actual parameter updates. So batch gradient descent is when you use the entire training set on one go and you compute the gradient and then you do a single step of gradient descent. Mini batch gradient descent is when you divide up the training set into what are called mini batches and you typically choose a batch size um, and then you will separately compute the gradients on those mini batches and then you will take a step in that direction for each one of those mini batches. Stochastic gradient descent uh, is related to both batch and mini batch gradient descent, but it mostly refers to shuffling up the training set randomly. And then similarly, you would divide that up into smaller batches and then compute the gradients on those batches and then perform the respective parameter updates. Okay, yeah, that generally makes sense. So I'm curious then when might you choose to use, for example, like full batch gradient descent versus mini batch versus state stochastic? Like why are there different ones and why do people choose a specific one to use? Yeah, so uh, people typically choose to split up the data into batches because of memory requirements. So if you have a data set that has millions of data points, for example, uh, unfortunately, you cannot usually fit that into memory when actually doing gradient descent. And so in practice, uh, people will divide these up into many batches so it can fit into your RAM of a GPU, let's say, and then, you know, periodically you can compute these updates and then gradually uh, kind of lower the loss function. Um, many batch gradient descent is also kind of used as a regular, a regularizer rather, um, to prevent overfitting on the training set because it adds a little bit of noise to the actual uh, gradient that you're computing on these mini batches. In response to the stochastic part of it, um, well, let's say that you have a particular training set that has patterns that are underlying in the order of the training set. You don't want to overfit your training data uh, or rather the training of your model to any order that could be representative within your training set. And so people will use stochastic gradient set, gradient descent to make sure, uh, you know, that that shuffling kind of takes out that variable of the order within the training data set. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because with um, deep learning in particular, there's often very strict like memory requirements and these models are typically quite large. Uh, so it makes sense that we would have variations that account for that. Um, so I'm yeah. also curious then, you mentioned that we use these optimization algorithms to try to decrease the loss. Um, so I would assume you want the loss to reach some kind of minimum, but a lot of loss functions that are encountered nowadays are actually non-convex. So can you tell me, are um, any of these optimization algorithms that we just talked about guaranteed to reach a global minima? In the case of a non-convex function, they are not guaranteed to reach a global minimum. In fact, uh, usually they don't reach a global minimum. In the case of neural networks, they usually have a lot of different minima, uh, and so usually it'll converge to some sort of local minimum or possibly a saddle point. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, and if the algorithm reaches a local minimum instead, are there issues with that? Like, is that generally still a good model? What do you think? Uh, so, you know, it depends. It could be a good algorithm. Um, you might want to try different 
uh, parameter initialization techniques to see if you're able to get to different minima within the actual model that you're training. Mm -hmm. uh, however, that is dependent on factors such as how it performs on your validation set and ultimately on your test set. Um, it kind of just depends how exactly you'd like to go about it. However, mm -hmm. a way of uh, potentially getting to a new minimum is using a different parameter initialization technique. Mm -hmm.